Hi guys, my name is Dr. Franz Dicky. You may know me as Pax I'm a high school teacher and a Google certified educator. Today I'm going to go over Google Forms for teachers. I'm going to go over how to create a quiz for your students, how to assign that quiz to your students, how to add different types of questions such as multiple choice, short answer, and detailed paragraphs, and how to create those assignments. I'm also going to show you how students are going to see and respond to that and specific supports you can provide to increase the chances of student survival on this essay. So let's head on over to the computer and find out how to use Google Forms for educators in 2019. Begin by going to google.com and signing in to your school email. In the top right corner, click on the Apps button to go to Google Classroom. You should now see a list of all classes that you have either created or are part of. Go to the class where you wish to assign the quiz. Go to Classwork and click on the blue button that says Create. Create a quiz assignment. Assign a title and instructions to your students for the quiz. Mine is Romeo and Juliet Act 1 Quiz. Assign a points value, a due date, and a task category that will make it easier to categorize later in your grading. At this point, make sure that grade importing is turned on. This allows you to import your grades far more quickly. Now where it states blank quiz, Click on the link, and this is where you start creating your quiz. Please note that this is the form attached to the assignment and the only one you will be editing for the purpose of creating the quiz. Once again, add the title and a description for your students. Because I want my students to truly be able to succeed on this quiz, I'm going to attach a video where I allow my students to study the content before they attempt the quiz. I am also going to add a link to the text itself so that students may access it before taking the exam. Now I can start adding questions. You may notice that typing them in one by one might be a bit much. so. I'm actually going to go to a Google document that I already have prepared with the quiz. Please note that this is not my quiz, I found it on PC Magazine, strangely enough. When I copy the options and I paste them into Google Form, note how they automatically become their own option. So I do not have to type anything for four different options. I make the question required and I assign a points value and where it says answer key I am now adding the correct answer. I click on the plus sign on the right to create another question. Once again I go to my document, I copy the question and now I go back to copy the 
options. Delete erroneous options. And once again, click on answer key to select the correct answer and preferred points value. Add the plus button on the right. And once again, you can now type a question. This time, instead of making the question a multiple choice, I am going to do something slightly different and make it check boxes with more than one required answer. Go on answer key, and I'm making three of the four options correct, where students must select all three. For the next question, I am making it a short answer. Notice how this time there is no answer key because short answers can vary, so I don't like to add a correct answer in that sense. And this time I'll make it worth five points because it's a short answer, so perhaps slightly more effort was required. Once again, I add a new question. And this time, to really cap off the quiz, I'm going to make this the most challenging question yet. I add details to reflect that this question is going to be a relatively rigorous question. And I ask for it to be a paragraph. And this time, in the answer key, I dictate that I want it to be 9 points so that the total exam is worth 20. Now, if you notice, I have zero responses right now. And I can make a spreadsheet of all future responses, but really, I don't need that currently. I could send it via email, but I don't need to do that because I'm already distributing this via my classroom. So once again, I click Assign, and the students will now have this exam due for tomorrow. Let's see how a student would see this exam. The student will do the same thing I did and go into their student account. The student will also go to classroom where they will see that the teacher has assigned this new quiz. Once they click on it, the student may attempt this exam. Notice how it warns them that it is answering based on their email, so be sure to use your own email. The student watches the video prior to answering the questions. The student also opens up the act to be able to read it. And finally, the student now answers the questions.
After the student has finished typing, they may click Submit. And at this point, when they view their score, they're only going to see a relatively low score because the system automatically only grades the multiple choice. Notice how it even gives them feedback on the answer that they got wrong. This is going to say wrong, but you need to tell your students that the short answer the computer cannot grade. So at this point, we're going to return to see how the teacher handles it, whereas the student has already submitted it. Now the teacher is going to go back to Google Classroom, where they're going to see English literature. They'll see classwork, and they're going to see the quiz. Notice how it says one student has turned it in. And right now the student has no grade. So what the teacher is going to do is click on the exam itself, go back to edit mode by clicking on the top right pen button. And now in the responses, the teacher is going to look at the individual summary. Notice how there's only one student right now who's responded. It's a light class. So as you can see, it says four out of 20 points. I do not want to release the score yet. Here, I think the student got two out of three, so I could actually edit an existing score and give them one point maybe. They answered absolutely nothing here, so I'm going to give them zero credit. And now this answer seems pretty decent, but I feel like they could have done more. So I'm going to give them partial credit. And I'm also going to add individual feedback. That's pretty amazing. Save the feedback. Save the edits. And now the updated score of 11 out of 20 can be released. So at this point, go back to Classroom and where it says Import Grades, click Import. I only had one student, so I could have released it, but you want to keep it for the whole class, so import grades. And you're done. So, just a quick reminder guys, when you're using this, always, always use your school email, not your personal email. Google Suite for Education has specific rules regarding privacy that normal Google emails do not. So, for the sake of your student safety, be sure to use your school email and not your personal email. If you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. And always remember, the purpose of any assessment is to gauge student progress so that we can improve our own instruction and increase student betterment. This packs any pepper. Say peace out, stay peppery, and don't forget, sometimes lots of best lessons are in the stories we hear least. Have an awesome day, guys.